Hi, welcome to PHP RSS series part 6. Now in part 5 we talked about making a uh, form in which you can add your RSS feeds to your database so that you don't have to uh, go in here and and manually insert them directly in your database. You'll be able to do this from your site. So if you miss that, go back and check it out. Uh, this form, what I've done is I've found uh, Yahoo News and I found their RSS's which is if you go to Yahoo News down here on the bottom it says Y News RSS now they have a lot of RSS feeds so I've, I've decided I want to start uh, putting uh, tech news in there so I have picked up this one here gadgets that we're gonna look at uh, okay I'm, I'm in the wrong part there I need to hit the actual RSS uh, little icon there and this is going to take me to this feed so I'm going to go ahead and grab that real quick I'm going to copy it and I've checked it out in my uh, in my tester and I know it's good so I've already moved past that point so I don't have to spend all this time typing everything in here so let me go ahead and make sure that I got the right one in there oh that's gadgets yeah okay Yahoo gadgets all right good enough so uh, if we go to my database, I do have, I think, Yahoo Gadgets, but I think I just put the wrong thing in there for that. So let's go ahead and, and browse the feeds list and see what I've got in there. And uh, I'm going to show you that I have Yahoo Gadgets. So, and that's RSS Wireless. So I put the, actually put the wrong thing in there. But we're going to have to do a little bit of housekeeping on this. So as we do... Uh, I'm going to show you a problem with this real quick like and why we have to do this housekeeping. All right, I'm going to hit create a new page and I'm going to create this feed for Yahoo Gadgets. All right, it's been successful. Now let's say a month goes by and I've got 280 feeds on my site and I can't remember who I've been to and who I haven't. And I go in here and I put this in again. And when I do, I'm going to have a redundant feed in my database. So if you'll check here, we'll hit browse and we'll look at it again. And I should have two of those gadgets in there. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a little bit of housekeeping to keep this from happening. So before we can do that, because it won't successfully do it with multiples already in the system, so you have to take one of those out. And we're going to have this Yahoo gadgets in there still. Okay, next thing you want to do is you want to go to structure of that table which is going to be the feeds list and then on uh, feed URL we don't want to ever have to put ever put the same URL in here so you just go over here and you click unique alright and it'll say that it's added a unique field on on two so if you go down here and open up indexes and uh, you'll see that there is a feed URL uh, unique index here. Uh, unique, yes. Okay, so let's go back to our browse here. And now you're going to see something interesting where I had uh, tried to put it in twice and it was successful. So we go back over here to this, we back out of the parse, and we've got the same URL in here. Well, let's say we came back two months later and can't remember whether we put it in there or not and don't feel like searching for it, but we just put one into this new form and we click this. Watch the error that comes up. Duplicate entry for HTTP uh, blah blah gadgets for feed URL. Okay, so now let's go to our database and see if it actually put it in there because we got a browse and we got 10 in there total and we're going to hit browse again and there should still be 10. Yes, it didn't put it in again. So that keeps you from duplicating. So this is the housekeeping that you have to do on your database for this. So as soon as you've uh, set that, uh, as soon as you've set that field to unique, the URL field, you'll never have to worry about uh, overdoing it or whatever. So you can just go willy nilly and just start throwing feeds in there. And if you get a duplicate in there, it's not going to matter because it's not going to go in there. So I'm going to go back here to this, uh, this feeds table because I want to clean it out. And uh, in order to do that, I'm just going to go to operations and I'm going to, well, yeah, 
operations and I'm going to truncate this table which means empty everything that's in the table and it's doing that now and, and at the same time it's writing new stuff so there's actually going to be a couple in there yeah 12 and you can see on uh, my cron which I've got running every 15 seconds on the desktop it's populating these stories so let's get to the form itself and what the form is about because there's some important things that I want to cover uh, I had mentioned before about uh, not changing, let me go back to the feeds list, uh, about that I wanted to change some of the things in here. But something I found very interesting in this, and I don't want to change, and I don't want you to change because I'm changing all of the scripts to accommodate it going forward, is this field that I mentioned, field length. Okay, I'm actually now using field length in my cron. And we'll get to that in the form, so let's go ahead and go through this. Of course, you got the name and the title, and I use the same on both. You have your URL, we've covered that, and that goes in there. And feed location, you can put a state, a city, you can put everywhere, you can put whatever you want to. And the description's all pretty self-explanatory. Now let me get into these other things right here. Number to fetch. Okay, as your cron script runs, it fetches it, it now loops through and it'll index one uh, entire feed and then it'll loop through and index another entire field and it'll index whatever number you set it to index and I've set mine to index five at a time and the number of stories it's going to index is right here in this number to fetch field so you want to keep this low. Now I, I know when you're first starting out you want as many stories as you humanly can get in there but the bottom line is this is going to put quite a strain on your uh, on your cron system if you've got it something set something like 10 or whatever. Uh, depending upon how often you're going to run your cron if you have it set to three chances are there's not going to be three new stories between two runs of crons so you're going to cover everything so you want to keep this number pretty low. You don't want to keep that number at one because if two stories roll out between your cron and you've got this set at one, you're going to miss one of those stories and, and you're never going to get it. But this will take the latest three stories off of any RSS feed. So you're going to want to use this number. If you've got an extremely active uh, feed that you're following, you know, bump it to four, bump it to five. I wouldn't go much higher than that. If you've got a feed that doesn't do more than a story every couple of days, make this number one. Okay, and the next thing down here that's important is I've set a cron number. And in your database, let's go back to that. We've covered this before. But this is a enum field from one to five. And uh, by default, it's going to go to one. And that means that you've used this page... Uh, your, that you've used uh, your page tester number one and that's worked. Now if you've modified a page tester and made that number two you'll want that number to be number two. So you can set that cron to number two if it's set up and laid out differently than the feed that's in cron one. I know that's probably difficult to understand at the moment but we will get into that as we start parsing different types of feed with different information in it. But I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna get off of the gadgets one, and I'm gonna go to the wireless one here, and just real quick we'll go ahead and drop that one in there. I've already tested this, so I don't need to test it in my tester uh, because that's just gonna make this run long. So I'm gonna go ahead and Control V on the wireless, and it's gonna be Yahoo Wireless. Let's just grab that word here. Yahoo Wireless, two S's, copy, paste, everywhere, Yahoo Wireless. And now I want to fetch, I'm going to say, I'm going to fetch two stories at a time. I don't know how fast that feed goes. You know what, just, just for now I'll do three. I can always go in the database and change that. I'm going to run it on cron one, so let's uh, create that field. And I don't know, yeah, I already, I already took that out of there. So we create it, 
and we can see from our output that it wasn't already in there but it's been created successfully and now if I click here it's all good and I can go back here so then I can go to my feed tester I can go down the line if I want to and I can just start popping these in uh, I can pop in social media for example you know just drop that right in here I'm not going to go through the whole process I'm just going to run run the test on it control V and now that I know the test is good all I have to do is enter the feed into the database hit that link right there and I've fixed up a couple of links I've added this to the tester I've added three files so if you will look down below you'll see the files that I've added and how you can run those files let's see how long this video is going it's already 10 minutes so yeah pick up the files from down below and I do want to tell you put those in an admin folder news admin and those files also put your uh, put your testing script in there as well I know your testing script is probably down in the base root right under news but put that in your admin folder because we're gonna have to deal with securing some of these that can make changes to the base root of the site you don't want people who are visiting your site to be able to make changes so we're gonna have to add some security to that and the best way to do that is to go ahead and get all of these uh, parsers testers and things of that nature into an admin folder now and once you've got those in your admin folder and working check them out uh, if you followed this tutorial exactly the way I've laid it out all of these scripts should work just fine once again like I said follow everything uh, put all of these into your admin folder I'm gonna open mine and you can see what I've got sitting in the admin folder let me go ahead and do that right now file open and now that's free scripts so let me go to admin and you should have uh, these these are my testing scripts I'm actually using two I don't know what yours are called but I've got two of these in here uh, in fact this one doesn't even need to exist so I'm gonna I'm gonna remove that one so you should have at this point you should have one testing script uh, new feed form PHF PHP and new feed parse PHP and these files you're gonna get from uh, the links down below I've made them text files and you'll just need to rename those into PHP files and they should work just fine for you and uh, we will catch you in the next video where I'll probably go on a little bit more about this thanks and if you like this please thumbs up comment rate subscribe uh, really would appreciate it and you have a great uh, whatever you're having and we'll see you in the next video